Uh, Russia's economy might appear to be doing relatively well in recent years. Russia's economy might appear to be doing relatively well in recent years, growing at a bit over 4% per year in 2010 and 2011. Uh, however, as everyone knows, there is a serious underlying problem of resource dependence. Uh, this figure shows that uh, from the mid-90s, the percentage of Russia's exports made up of uh, mineral products has grown uh, quite substantially to more than two-thirds while the green bar, which is uh, machinery uh, exports, has fallen to about 5%. Uh, there is another problem with Russia's interface with the global system. Uh, this shows Russia's net exports as a percentage of GDP, the difference between exports and imports. Russia has been running a huge export surplus for a long period of time. Uh, this uh, might show, you might think this shows strength in uh, Russia's uh, trading position, but unfortunately it shows a serious problem. Uh, it means that Russia's growth is very dependent on unpredictable world demand, and it means that Russia, which does not have such a high income, is effectively subsidizing the consumption and investment of higher income countries. Uh, the United States, Europe, can uh, consume and invest more than they produce because Russia is giving them a gift each year of 8% of its GDP in goods and services. This is not advantageous. Uh, I can't go through my whole presentation uh, uh, today. Uh, one thing I wanted to uh, discuss is how Russia ended up in this fix. Uh, I'll just uh, briefly say that at the uh, end of the Soviet period, uh, as you know, Russia had a diversified, industrialized economy, but the neoliberal policy that was adopted at that time uh, destroyed uh, Russia's uh, diversified economy. Uh, this has several negative effects on Russian economy and society. Uh, the, uh, first of all, uh, it encourages corruption. The export of valuable resources generates a large revenue flow. Uh, with very little uh, cost, and this big margin uh, encourages various uh, corrupt flows of income uh, to various groups. This is uh, true of all resource-dependent economies. Uh, secondly, it retards the development of industry. Uh, this is not just a matter of the famous Dutch disease that a country that exports a valuable mineral will tend to have its currency increase in value and that uh, uh, encourages import of manufactured goods. It goes beyond that. Uh, this kind of uh, dependence on uh, mineral exports uh, draws uh, most of the energy, uh, the investments, uh, the innovation in the Russian economy into uh, the export sector. That's what's most profitable, and that re is a serious uh, negative factor. Uh, third, uh, the resource dependence uh, creates a mismatch between uh, a mismatch between Russia's economy and its people. Uh, not very many people are needed to export a large volume of minerals, and most of Russia's uh, 140 some million uh, urbanized, well-educated people uh, have no role to play in the dominant economic activity in Russia. Uh, one of the consequences of this is uh, the continuing decline in Russia's population. There are many factors that lie behind it, but one of them is that uh, most of the population have no role in the economy, and so uh, the birth rate falls and the death rate rises. Uh, this shows the trend in birth rate, death rate, and the difference, which is the natural rate of population change, and you can see that it's improved, but it is unfortunately still uh, negative. Uh, fourth, uh, it also, this resource dependence also weakens Russia's position in the world, something I will skip over in the interest of time. Uh, in my view, it is still possible for Russia to escape from resource dependence. 
a reorientation of Russia's economy uh, would require a shift to a developmental state model instead of the neoliberal model. Uh, developmental state models have played a key role for many countries in history. Uh, this involves using the state to move up the economic ladder uh, toward a more technologically advanced, stronger, and more diversified economy. Uh, for example, uh, the USA uh, used such a strategy in the 19th century, although this is not so often discussed. Japan in the late 19th century and more recently. South Korea after World War II. China since 1978. Virtually every case of uh, the development of an advanced economy uh, in history uh, has involved a developmental state. Uh, what might such a strategy entail for Russia? Uh, first, industrial policy uh, aimed at promoting uh, the long-run development of key industries. And by the way, I was not persuaded by my old friend Andrei Klepich that uh, Russia, the Russian state is already following such a policy. I, I have not seen it. Uh, I'll pre present some data <coughs> to back this up. <coughs> Second, the financial policy aimed at directing cheap credit uh, toward, for productive purposes rather than speculative activities, which continues to be a problem in Russia today. Third, uh, state investment in infrastructure, transportation, communication, uh, power, uh, as well as science and technology and education, things which were once done to a very great extent in Russia. Uh, fourth, uh, a state role in where Russia's natural resources go to uh, direct them toward uh, domestic development rather than simply export. <coughs> and fifth, and this will be difficult entering the WTO uh, to uh, seek to regulate Russia's uh, interface with the global economy in both trade and investment to uh, discourage uh, short-term speculative capital movements in and out of the country while encouraging uh, those kinds of foreign direct investment that are helpful and to have the right to protect uh, infant industries for some time. China has managed to uh, work out a way to do this. A key requirement for a developmental state is to have a high rate of fixed investment. Uh, in recent years, fixed, gross fixed investment in Russia has been about 20% of GDP. That's fine for a uh, mature capitalist economy, but for an economy in Russia's condition, uh, it's much too low. And let me present a comparison with China. Now, what I've compared is Russia in 2011 with China in 2001, which was the last year before China's model became very greatly distorted by its entry into WTO and became export dependent. If you look at, so I compare China in 01 when I think it had a, an effective state uh, development model uh, to Russia today. If you look at the uh, gross fixed investment figure, Russia's 21%. Uh, China's is probably too high. 30% would be more like it. Now look at this. Uh, China's big net exports are recent. Uh, at that time, they were close to balance. If Russia cut its net exports to a balance in its external sector, it would free up enough resources to have a 30% uh, investment ratio, which would be suitable for uh, developing uh, Russia's economy. Uh, if, how much? What? I have eight. You're counting the time I set up my PowerPoint. Uh, there are several potential benefits uh, for Russia in such a shift. A diversified industrial economy would fit uh, Russia's uh, population, which is a rather important point if the economy is to exist for the people. Uh, uh, it would provide a basis for long-term development. Uh, of its population, uh, and it would enable Russia to continue to play a major role uh, in the world. If Russia stays with its current resource export dependent course, I am afraid that uh, it will face a future of uh, economic, uh, political, and social decline. Thank you. Thank you.